All right, welcome back to an Only Pools podcast. Been a little bit, been a few extra days for since our last one, uh, but I think we're finally caught ourselves up with the storms and uh, we can start getting into real pools. You down with OPP, yeah, you know me. You down with OPP, yeah, you know me. You down with OPP, yeah, you know me. Who's down with OPP, every last homie. Hey, you ever go swimming, man, it's so much fun. Now we got a podcast showing in everyone. Talking about pools, the stories we share from back Splashing to Olympic fair. We got chlorine, pH, and filter tips. Keep your pool fresh, avoiding no slips. With hosts so cool and guests so neat. We're dropping pool knowledge that it can't be beat. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Every last homie. Only pools podcast. Let's go. It's been hectic out there, but this week I've gotten a few people asking me and we've noticed some with newer techs training we're going to talk about alkalinity and i guess ph because both work hand yep. in hand absolutely they both uh work together and uh, you can't talk about one without the other um now the biggest wife's wife's tale or myth mm-hmm. i've heard if it is a myth but can you add normal baking soda that you got in your fridge or in your pantry to your pool. Right. Absolutely. Increase. Yep. Arm and hammer. It's even on the, it's on the bags that we get from our wholesalers, the 50 pound bags say arm and hammer on them. Mm-hmm. So you can absolutely use the regular baking soda. Although using a pound or half pound at a time in those boxes, you're, you're going to go through quite a few. <laughs> and I know I think it's only like 69 cents. I just bought some from my fridge, fridge the other day, keep odors down, but um, yeah, 69 cents times. But how much is in a box? Like half a quarter pound, maybe. Oh man! Yeah, like six, eight ounces, I think. <laughs> trying to add. Yeah, yeah, it's. <laughs> you can. It's not worth it. That's the point we're trying to get across. Yeah, I guess if you're in a pinch, but really your pH is never that that important that you can't wait till the next day to go to a pool store. Right. Talking about the, they're talking about pH and alkalinity together, uh, and the why they're why they're so important. Well, you can't adjust them separately, but if our focus here is always on alkalinity. No matter what your chemical readings are, if you don't fix your alkalinity first, none of it will matter. Uh, if your pH is and alkalinity are too high, you're and you ha- have chlorine in there, it's not going to work. Uh, we've run into that problem here recently, where we've had a couple of pools that I'm seeing their quartz when they come in, and their pH is at 8.2, alkalinity is 120, and I see I've seen people add, still adding bicarb to the pool, and shoot all that up. All, and, and then they added chlorine because the chlorine was zero, and they're wondering, uh, they're wondering why. And the chlorine that you put in is not going to work with a pH of eight point four. Nope. So you have to get that down. Uh, pH uh, ideal pH range is between seven two and seven six. Seven five is always your target that you're trying to hit. So that's what we we try to hit all the time. Um, but in certain pools, like salt pools, your pH will always have a higher swing yes. uh, because the chlorine that's produced out of the salt cell produces a high pH of about thirteen. Uh, the liquid chlorine that we put in your pool has a higher pH of about 11. Uh, so it's going to drive up your uh, pH a little bit. So there's always, you know, you do one thing, there's always an effect uh, from doing that thing. So that's why we want to teach everybody to treat your alkalinity first. Um, alkalinity is a buffer for your pH. So if you get your alkalinity be- right between that 80 and 120 parts, that's going to keep your pH where it's supposed to be. So you can have a pH or I'm sorry, an alkalinity of 60 and a pH of 8.2, if you add bicarb, it's going to raise both. Correct. But the pH will swing back to where it's supposed to be because it's going to fall in that, that buffer zone of if your alkalinity is correct. So you get your alkalinity back up to 80 to 120, and your pH will, will swing itself back to where it's supposed to be. And that's why we, we don't use things like soda ash. Uh, I know a lot of people up north use it because so, soda ash is a product that will raise your pH without affecting your alkalinity. If your pH is low and your alkalinity is fine, you could add soda ash. That would work. Yes, but we don't even have it here in Florida, really. I don't even think our supplier carries it. And it still so. does affect it, just not as much as bicarb does. Correct. I did want to point out, so alkalinity is like stabilizer to chlorine, almost in effect where it'll keep a certain ideal range, Correct. As long as your stabilizer is in a good range, your right. chlorine will kind of maintain a good yes, range. Yes, that's an, absolutely. Same okay. with if your alkalinity is in the good range, your pH will 
right fall more back or less in. do the same thing stay okay. in a good range i understand now yes it will thinking of it <laughs> okay so i mean it's it's a problem i see a lot um in the field uh People going, I see them going into Pinch Penny and other um, big retail stores, and you know they're always being sold. Oh, you need acid for this, or you need um, bicarb for this. That focus on your alkalinity first, and getting that correct, and the rest will be easy sailing. Because if you are worried about your pH, everything you're going to add is going to affect it. Just like mm-hmm. the new trainees I got, you know, or our P, one of our pools was just coming back from something the pH was extremely low, like mm-hmm. a six point something, right. you know, nobody's been in this pool, so don't worry about that. Yeah. But we, uh, we were adding a bunch of stuff to him. Like the chlorine is going to raise this. The bicarb is going to raise this. Correct. You know, our, look at our alkalinity is yellow on our little tester. I was like, that needs to be like a green, green color. Mm-hmm. And when I was telling him, he's like, so do we add anything to bring our pH? I'm like, everything we're dumping in here, We'll raise it. We'll raise it. That's just a side effect of everything we're adding, even though right. we're not adding something to directly raise our pH. Right, such as soda ash, which would yeah. which would raise your pH. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to add soda ash on top of everything else you just added because no. it's going to spike too high. Yeah, and this is another reason why we don't really use soda ash here in Florida. Um, it's probably more popular up north, and we'll leave it there. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm from Ohio, but I haven't lived there since I was a teenager. So, in Wisconsin, uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember us using that much soda ash, but that was yeah, no 15 years ago. ago. So, yeah, I mean, oh. chemistry is so important to the overall quality of your pool and what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, your, the pH of, a, of the human eye is like 7.0, 7.1. Um, so that's what you're trying to achieve in your pool. If you've got that, yes. that burning feeling uh, in your eyes after being in your pool, everybody thinks it's chlorine. It's not. It's because your pH is off. Uh, so right. that's why we make sure that we uh, are adjusting the alkalinity, which will cause the pH to fall into where it's supposed to be and you'll have a nice happy pool. And then I did want to go over that. I got uh, some side effects of your pH is over a 7.8. Mm-hmm. Some of the side effects that I found or what it can do is not only irritate your skin mm-hmm. and mess with your eyes. And this one's kind of weird because if your pH is too low, 7.2 or lower, mm-hmm. like we're really low, like in the sixes, it can still mess with your eyes because right. the water's too acidic. Yep. And then if it's too high, obviously it's too basic. Mess with it. Yep. Cloudy water was a big one. Yeah. If your pH is off, you you can kind of look at it. Same with scale buildup, just like calcium. If the calcium level is too high, you'll get a bunch of buildup. If your pH is uh, too high, same. You'll get a lot of weird buildup. And then on the reverse side, if it's too low. If you have a pool liner, yeah, it'll eat that away. Yeah, water is a hungry animal, so it's it's yeah. it's searching for things to eat. In this mm-hmm. case, you know, um, calcium. If it, if it doesn't have, if you don't have calcium in your water and it's not maintained at the level, proper level, it's going to take it from the surface because their surface concrete surface has calcium. Oh, calcium in it. So, or or if you don't have, if you've got tile, but on a fiberglass pool, it's going to take it from the grout in the tile because that's mm-hmm. a kind of cementous uh, product. So that's where it's going to take it from. Uh, so same way, you know, with balancing your your pH and your alkalinity. Um, pH is a scale of uh, of acidity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if it's low, it's acidic. If it's high, it's considered basic. Base. So and then we're trying to find that more neutral zone of you know seven five, you know seven two to seven six is ideal. Keep in mind that it doesn't seem like much, but seven six is actually high. So if you're getting a seven six. I'd probably add a little bit just to, to bring it out because oh, yeah. the following week it's going to be up again. So uh, just know that if it's reading seven six seven eight um, seven eight, I definitely am adding acid to bring that back down. So when we go through our training courses with new people and we get to the week where we go over chemistry, I'm like, right now we look at all of our tests, mm-hmm. everything is an ideal range, right. but in a week what is this going to be right so we're going to lower a couple of these raise a couple of the other ones and watch when we you know when we come back it should be tomorrow yeah and that's what we want to adjust it because i had a lot of people that it would be seven five or seven six yeah in our thing it says that's okay right but a salt pool 
a week later, now it's at a seven, eight or an 8.1. And now you're dumping a boatload of acid into that pool. Yeah. I recently had a call from a customer saying, how come my pH is always at 8.4? And I had to explain that, you know, Hey, the salt, the chlorine that's made from salt is so high. Chlorine, chlorine in it. Yeah. So it's constantly going to raise it and we adjust it when we're there. And when we, when we leave, it's good. But mm -hmm. by the time we get back, it won't be the same. So, and I took a minute, but they, they finally understood. Chemistry is hard. It is. But once you learn it, I mean, it, it, it's so easy. I mean, there's only five things that we're really paying attention to. You know, your free chlorine, oh. your pH, your alkalinity, your calcium, uh, and Stay your stabilizer. Mm -hmm. So those are the five main ones that, that are most important to learn. And once you learn them, keeping pools is easy. But we, we have a service company. I think of it more as it's a convenience is why we do people's pools. Right. Not because they can. People are smart. And I mean, for even for the ones that aren't, that's what YouTube was invented for, like me. I learned a lot of stuff from YouTube, and there are a ton, besides our channel, of course, uh, there's a ton of videos you'll find out on water chemistry. Yes. Uh, a lot of good ones out there, and uh, there's really nothing that you can't do for your own pool, you know, versus hiring a pool service. Because uh, everything we do, a person could do themselves, yes. 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 Well, but, we're better at it because we do it every day, 16 times a day. Yeah. And with 16 different pools per tech, you know. And once I fill out all my little <laughs> test results, I know exactly what I need to add. Yeah. You get the homeowner out there, he's writing stuff down. It'll take him the whole day, but for us, yeah. it's super easy. And for all the pool techs out there, if you just take the time and balance your pool within the first week of your service, for the rest of that month, as long as no outside factors mess with your pool, that pool will be the easiest thing for the rest of the month. Just take the time, balance it. Yep. So uh, I'm trying to teach everybody that we get in here for hires. I'm like, a balance take pool the time. is an easy pool. It's, oh my gosh. So, hard thing that we, we, fo we focus really hard on our chemistry here as mm -hmm. a company because it's the most important thing. It keeps yes. people's services from uh, going bad over time. It keeps um, them complaining about the irritation to the mm -hmm. eyes. Um, it's it's the basis of everything we do. So a good foundation in chemistry and smooth sailing from there. We had two customers that we've recently taken over from other companies out there, mm -hmm. but both customers do the same thing. Every time we show up, they're like, can you please either text me or knock on the door and tell me what you added? Right. Because the last people we had would never tell me anything, didn't know what they were doing. And I was like, oh man, I feel so bad. Like, what did they ruin? Right, yeah. And I, I wish we could find horror stories from other companies, but I don't want to put anybody on blast. Yeah, we're not here to like <laughs> bash any other companies. I, no. I, did a, I did a commercial uh, quote yesterday. And um, when I got there, uh, there's yellow algae starting to form in the corners of the pool. He goes, I'm sick and tired of this. This happens all the time. I was like, well, you know, what? Right. my tech doesn't know what the heck he's doing. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's go over and look at your uh, equipment. And he had stinner pumps and an IPS controller, which is a computer Thanks. basically that will tell you that continuously monitors the water, the, the pH and the chlorine level or ORP level. And it'll you'll program what you want it to be set at. And when it falls out of range, it will automatically add either chlorine or acid. And it's like a standard across mm -hmm. all commercial pools, almost. Yes, almost, it will be soon. Um, yeah. All commercial pools will have these. But yeah, most of ours do. And as soon as I, I look at it, he's got an ORP of like 690, which is a little bit low for the chlorine. It's not too bad, but I'm like, well, it doesn't matter how much that chlorine could say 900. And mm -hmm. it's still not working. I was right. like, because your pH is reading 9.0. And Ooh. and I'm looking at it and, like, and I'm like, I was like, it, it, as I get, I was like, if you look, the, the controller is or the uh, feeder is still feeding chlorine to the pool because the other one has alarmed out. The, whoever set the system up never programmed it is why it was doing uh, that. Because it's because if it's you have a controller that's programmed, it'll it'll say, hey, no, my pH is wrong. I can't feed any more chlorine because it knows chlorine will raise pH. Mm -hmm. And they, because their system was never programmed, I pointed it out to the customer and they signed with it. He's like, that's an easy fix. I was like, it was an easy fix. I'm like, but your tech needs to know that. Three buttons, yeah. So that was, that was a nice easy grab for a new commercial account, but um just i just knew that i'm like this is why you're getting the yellow allergy because it, the chlorine can't work if your ph is so high no nope. I, I can pull a dump truck full of chlorine and put it in your pool and it still won't kill it Ain't gonna do nothing. so uh, get that ph down and you're gonna be golden so definitely 
That's good. Um, well, with wrapping it up, yep. <clears throat> uh, one of the tips I had for acid is, and there is a video on this. Our new guy, Joe, showed me a video. It was pretty cool, but they basically put food coloring in acid. I don't know how they did it, mm -hmm. but a good tip to pouring acid into your pool is diluting it. Absolutely. And when they showed it, if you just pour straight acid in your pool, it like sinks. It doesn't really evenly flow. No. Same with if you pour it right in front of a jet, it moves it a little bit better, but eventually it sinks. But diluting it, the way it spread out, like a virus almost. Much better, yep. Was incredible. So the tip of the day, I guess, is find how much you need to add, dilute it before you add it to your pool. Yep, never pour direct acid directly like over your steps or shallow areas because it, the acid is heavy and it will fall and rest on your surface and it will stain your surface. Mm -hmm. It'll actually eat through the cement of your surface and leave a stain that you cannot get up. It's permanent. So, uh, great tip. Yeah, yeah, make sure that you dilute, dilute those chemicals when you're using them. Uh, you should do that with anything. Uh, just makes it better. Uh, better distributed throughout the pool more of a riddle than it is a joke okay but to end the episode where can you find an ocean with no water <laughs> an ocean with no water i give up uh, a map oh yeah but you're right uh, i want to guess that <laughs> but by the way i think we've ran through all the like good pool jokes yeah, they're, I've been they're, trying to find them and I can't find them. Yeah, they're getting kind of thin. We might have to go off, off track a little bit. When, I'm, I'm so sorry. And make it a little more broader jokes. Yeah. Because um, we're only in episode, what? 14, I 14 think. 14 or something yeah. like that. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> I'm running out of jokes, people. All right. So if you know any jokes, send them in and send them <laughs> our way. We'd be happy to uh, air them on here. You know, some good pool jokes or pool related. Um, but for now... Uh, just want to make sure you keep watching, share this video, uh, like, and subscribe. And uh, as always, just keep swimming. Yeah. Get down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. Get down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. You down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. Who's down with OPP? Every last homie. Hey, you ever go swimming, man? It's so much fun. Now we got a podcast showing in everyone. Talking about pools, the stories we share. From backyard splashing to Olympic fair. We got chlorine, pH, and filter tips. Keep your pool fresh, avoiding no slips. With hosts so cool and guests so neat. We're dropping pool knowledge that it can't be beat. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. Who's down with OPP? Every last homie. Dive into discussions, no topics too small. From kiddie pools to water parks, we cover it all. We got pool parties and cannonballs too. If it's about water, we talking to you. you. Interviews with experts and stories to share. From poolside barbecues to water care. We got tips and tricks to keep your pool right. Listen in the morning or at the late night. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. Who's down with OPP? Every last old man. The best place to be. P is for pools. Come dive in with me. P is for podcasts. We talking weekly. Only pools podcast. The one and only. Grab your goggles and your floaties too. Tune in to our show. We got stuff for you. Poolside chats to aquatic news. Only pools podcast. You can't refuse. We teach you how to clean, how to keep it clear. The best pool stories that you'll ever hear. Uh, from summer fun to maintenance prep. Only pools podcast. We're your best bet. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. Podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. You down with OPP? Only pools podcast. Who's down with OPP? Every last homie. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Who's down with OPP? Every last homie. Only pools podcast. Let's go.